this tutorial, I'm going to be going through how to use XGBoost as a machine learning tool. Now, the first thing that I want you to do is to go ahead and install it. There is a version on CRAN, but I don't want you to use that. So in order to do that, to install it, I want you to do this instead. So what this does is that it actually grabs whatever it needs from uh, GitHub instead. So you get a bit more of the latest stuff and then you install that version instead of what's on CRAN. Right, so now I've, I've installed that, so I'm not going to run this bit. I'm going to start off by uh, by using uh, library XGBoost and so on. So require library XGBoost, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to get our uh, trainer test data from the uh, from the package in itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I just uh, read it in. Uh, I'm going to save the train set as uh, agaricus.train and test. And that's okay. So that's just reading in the data. Okay. So now let's really get started into uh, the machine learning part of this thing. So um, one of the initial things that we can do with machine learning is to cross validate, right? So we can we can uh, get our training data and then do ten for cross validation or whatever it needs to be done to figure out the parameters. In this thing, um, in XGBoost. The xgp.cv, so th this, this function over here, it's not that great in the sense that um, all, all you can really do is figure out one parameter, and that parameter over here is going to be the end rounds parameter. Okay, so it's um, it, usually you should at least run this up to 400 or so, but just for time's sake, I'm just going to run it up to 20, right? And then I'm going to show you. So the objective function in this situation is a logistic regression, right? So I go binary double dot logistic. The evaluation is log loss, so we're trying to minimize log loss. Um, and then we have these two parameters. Eta is a learning rate max depth, so the so each tree has a max depth of two. Okay, so I could have done changed this, but it's going to keep it that way and run it. Okay, so let's let's run this. Right, here we go. So the training log loss and the test log loss. I don't really care about the training log loss because usually I'm pretty sure every single machine learning algorithm it will reduce regardless. But what you should really keep your eye on is in this test log loss. Okay, so this is really important. Um, now in this case, the test log loss is still decreasing. So essentially, you need to run it for a long time until it starts increasing. Right, so uh, let me just plot plot this, and then I'll just show you what it looks like. So in this case, the test. So I've, I've actually taken the log of the the log loss, right? Log of the log loss, um, and then plot it just just so that I can see the numbers a bit better. But the point is, it's it's, it's still decreasing, right? So even even when I ran it up to, so after 200, it seems to curve off. But I'm not going to do that bit uh, because we're we're running out of time. So um, so from that from that plot, you're supposed to figure out what the uh, what the optimal number of rounds are, and and then run it. So the way that you should think of the number of rounds is, um, in my understanding at least, it's it's a number of trees that it grows, right? So um, I'll, I'll get I'll get to that in a bit. So right. So let's let's run this in here. So I haven't. Uh, I've kind of ignored the number of rounds over here. Okay, so I'll set n round to five, and then I'm going to run this uh, this training. Right, so let's just take n thread over here is the number of cores that you're going to use. So I could have set four, but in this case I'm just going to use two, uh, no particular reason. So yeah, so as you can see, the train error again, we don't, you should never care about the train error. It's decreasing. Oh, actually, there's a bit of a jump up here. Anyway, essentially it's decreasing. And then to predict. Uh, you can use preds or predict function. Okay, so over here we use the xgboost function to actually train my model to do cross validation. I use xgb.cv. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to put up this code. So don't stretch too much about it. Uh, so okay, so I'm going to use this uh, predictions to get my predictions. Uh, Right, and then I'm going to print my log loss. So the way that you calculate log loss is the log of the predictions. So the predictions over here, I'll just print out a few, is just probabilities. Okay, so it's the probabilities of the first ten that it will be one. Okay, so 0.92 probability. So your high probability that it's going to be predicted as one. So 
so you get the log of the, pred uh, the pred uh, predictions, the probabilities, uh, times the actual label. Okay, so we've got, got test times label, times plus log of one minus the prediction probability times one minus test labels. Okay, so if this is one, if the test label is one, this part over here will make it a zero. Okay, um, so and I'm taking the mean, the negative mean of, of all those, of that sum. So I end up getting 0.38. Now, remember how I used five as my rounds over here? So let's just go back to my cross validation over here. And if you look at test log loss for five, it says four, but that's because it starts at zero. Okay, so it's 0.4239. So I think this plus over here means, uh, I'm guessing is a standard error measure, right? So plus or minus that. I think, but anyway, so this is what you should look at, 0 0.42, 0 0.042, which is close enough to 0 0.038. Now, if I, just to just to iterate my point, I'll just go back here and change in rounds to, uh, let's just make it two. Obviously, this isn't great, but let's just print the, so it's 0 0.13 in this case, and if we go to two, it's 0.136, and it was 0 0.137. Okay, so again, keep in mind, this is for test, data and what they will it is test data but it's a cross validation version of test data that they've got okay and i am doing tenfold cross validation so in my cv thing there's an enfold option right uh so how, how many folds you want and end rounds option so this is really what uh, xgb.cv is optimizing you have to give it the train uh, labels and um and i've given it the train data now you don't have to do s dot matrix okay so you could have it could be a smart sparse matrix and that's fine but when you're doing uh, xg boost actual training algorithm I, I i am going to ask you to do s dot matrix I'll, and I'll show you why in a bit okay so now we're going to start digging into this uh, algorithm and seeing what it has actually done okay so let me just do this thing xgb dot model dot dt dot tree so it's actually going to show me the model that it's got so uh, as, as a data frame so let's go over here right so over here it's got the particular feature and what not what value it's going to split at now the the numbers in this case are dummy variables so it's only one on zero so that's why it's 0.5 the split okay and if it's a if it's greater than 0.5 which is yes I am going to go to this zero one ID Okay, so so that's uh, that's the ID of the feature and this the stalk root equals club feature, right? Um, yeah, this equals club is like that's actually the name of the feature, so it's not that I that it's the algorithm has done something there. Okay, so and if it's uh, again above 0 0.5, it'll go to zero three, uh, which is the leaf node. Okay, um, and so on so forth. If it's no, it goes to zero four, which again is a leaf. A missing value so um, it's it's really important to understand that uh, XG boost you can have data sets that has missing values it is robust to missing values so um, it's a good good algorithm if you have missing values to tr uh, do machine learning on okay so um, this cover I'm not sure what quality is um, actually let's see if there's a gain here no, they haven't put a gain um, Okay, let's. Okay, so quality and cover, I'm not entirely sure about, but let me just show you something else. So we can do some sort of feature selection over here. Uh, so I'm going to, just going to get the names of my of the columns, right? So that's what this line is doing, and then I'm going to get an importance matrix. So XGB dot importance. You put down the names and then the model for some reason. I'm not sure what the logic behind it is, but anyway, let's just go with that, and then let's plot this importance. Oops, that's not good. Okay, let's just check out this important matrix. Right, okay, so it only goes up to four values. So um, let, me, let me just. Oh, it only goes up to four values because I only have uh, n rounds equals two over here. Okay, so that, that was a silly thing for me to do. Let me just. Uh, Let's run this again. Okay, that's better. 
right. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure if you can see the names of these things, but that's besides the point. Uh, the, the point is, so you can see that as soon as I add this feature in, how much gain uh, the, the, main, uh, the algorithm is getting in terms of accuracy. Right, so they've done this. They've done some sort of clustering, which I'm not too sure. It's nothing to do with the labels, right? So they got three clusters over here. If I put in more, you find out that there are more clusters. Um, so it's nothing to do with the labels in themselves. Uh, but anyway, they they done they done some pretty colors. So you can see, um, if you wanted to, you can ignore anything be below a certain threshold, right? So the accuracy will improve. Obviously, you you have to have the order, the order equals none, but the other, other ones, you can get rid of them. And lastly, but not least, uh, we'll just plot the tree, xgb.plot.tree, right? And, okay, so here we go. So I'm, I'm only, I've, I've told it to plot just the first, uh, the first two trees, okay? Because otherwise it's just gonna get too big. And uh, here we go, so that, uh, so if you look at this thing over here, you can see if order equals none. If it's less than 0.5, you go to this one, so the stock root club. If that's less than 0.5, you go down to the leaf. Okay, so the leaf will uh, give you a probability between zero and one. Okay, so what's um, what's a bit, well, it's not strange, but what it doesn't tell you is that uh, which side it leans to. Okay, so it is a one or, or the zero of the labels. So that I thought was a bit weird with XGBoost, but that's that's okay. Um, it tells, like, it gives you a rough idea of how this model is working, right? And all this information that you see here, you can see in your um, in your trees data frame. Okay, so exactly the same information. So order equals none. If it's if it's a no, you go to zero two, which will be spore print color green. So whatever that is. So if we go here, yeah, if it's a if it's greater than 0.5, it goes to zero. Okay, so zero two. Again, some something strange over here. I was expecting the opposite way, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you visualize the model that XGB has put. It is an amazing tool. It's like in, in my experience of, of what I've used, it's uh, it's better than random forest, right? It's because it's it's a lot faster. Uh, in fact, it performs better. So XGBoost should be one of the, the main tools that you, should, that you should be testing when you do machine learning. That's it for, from me for now. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know uh, and I'll put up the code. Uh, so please subscribe, like, and thanks for watching.